so here we have a problem with two smooth spheres colliding and uh, they lose a little bit of energy and the coefficient of restitution is 3 over 4 and uh, we're asked to find the speed of both A and B after the collision then we're asked to find the loss of kinetic energy due to the collision and then the magnitude of the impulse imparted so um, where do we start with this? Well first off in our log tables we've got three equations which we can use. These are um, for Newton's law uh, or the momentum will be the first one so if I just type this in here I think I should have a and if I go one second there that's the equation for momentum the next one then we need to do is the equation for Newton's experimental law and then the third one that we'll be using for the third part is the impulse impulse one so it's the so these three equations they're on page 51 of our log tables so these are what we're going to be using now I'm just going to number these just so that I can show you clearly when I'm using them. That's one, I'll call this one two, and this one three. So, where do we start? Um, well, I'll just write out the information that we have. Let's just spell it out, just be a little bit, be very clear on what we, what we do now at the start. So, I'm going to call M1 five kgs, and the initial velocity of mass one, to be 3 meters per second. This is coming from the diagram above. M2 will be 2 kilograms and U2 will be equal to minus 5 meters per second. Now just to note that I am using or I'm picking or I have chosen this to be positive which is probably fairly standard for these type of questions. So, first part of this film, we need to work out the speed of A and the speed of B. In order to do this, we're gonna be using equations one and two, and we're gonna end up with simultaneous equations. So first, from equation one, we know that M1, U1 plus M2, U2 is equal to M1, V1 plus M2, V2. So I'll just fill that in. We've got the equation right there, so I'm just gonna fill that those numbers in. 5 times 3 plus 2 times minus 5, the signs are really really important, very easy to make mistakes with them, is equal to 5 times b1 plus 2 times b2. So 15 minus 10 would be 5 is equal to 5 v1 plus 2v2. Now from equation 2 then, this one here, we have v1 minus v2 is equal to the coefficient for restitution which is 3 over 4 times u1 which is 3 minus, and I'm going to put a brackets around this because it's very easy to forget that minus sign there. So V1 minus V2 is equal to minus 3 over 4 times 3 minus minus 5, which would be 3 plus 5, which is 8, which is equal to minus 6. So V1 minus V2 is equal to minus 6. Now I'm going to write that again just so that there'd be no... So we'd be very clear on that. Um, V1 minus V2 is equal to minus 6. So now we've got two equations and we're going to solve them simultaneously to find out the coefficient of restitution, to find out the two velocities. So the first one, I'm going to call this just so that there's a bit of sequence in this, I'll call that equation 4 and this equation 5. So if I multiply equation 5 by 2 and add it to equation 4. So I can continue on underneath this one here. So if I go 2 times equation 5 
that will give us, so 2 times minus 6 will be minus 12, is equal to plus 2v1 minus 2v2. So I'll just switch the order of the, the equation, which you can do. So we can add these now again. 5 minus 12 minus 7. 5 plus 2 7v1. And those two cancel. So what we get here is an equation for v1 is equal to minus 1 meters per second. Now, subbing this back into equation 6, here we get minus 1 minus v2 is equal to minus 6. Bring over the minus 1, or add 1 to both sides, will give us minus v2 is equal to minus 6 plus 1, which will be minus 5, or v2 will be equal to 5 meters per second. So that's the first part of this equation done. Um, we've got the two velocities, two final velocities, but the speed of A and the speed of B. Now it's up to us to find the loss in kinetic energy due to the collision. Now, in order to do that, we need to remember, so I'm going to number this, we're on to part two. So kinetic energy is always worked out by so half m v squared. So before the collision, we could do a full equation for this. It's going to be a half m1 u1 squared plus a half m2 u2 squared. That's before. I'll just put it before. And after, it's going to be a half m1 v, I'm just going to rewrite that, it's very messy, a half m1 v1 squared plus a half m2 v2 squared. So subbing in all these numbers, um, it's just a matter of subbing them in, it's going to be a half, m1 is 5, u1 is 3, squared plus a half m1 is m2 is 2 and u2 is minus 5 squared so if we square these out we get a half times 5 times 9 which would be 45 divided by 2 would be 22 and a half plus and minus by minus would give us a plus value so minus 5 squared would be 25 and a half times 2 is that just so, before the collision, we have a kinetic energy of 47.5 joules. After the collision, we have a half 5, V1 is minus 1 squared, plus a half M2, which is 2 times V2 squared, 5 squared, which is equal to a half of 1, which is 2.5 plus 2 plus 25, which is equal to 27.5 joules. So, the difference in kinetic energy before and after is just equal to, or the energy lost, kinetic energy lost, is equal to the before minus the after, so it's 47.5 minus 27.5, which is equal to 20 joules. And that's our answer for the second part. Now, what we have to do next, then, is to find the magnitude of the impulse imparted to B due to the collision. So that's kind of like the difference in potential energy that B or the difference in momentum that, that B experienced. So we'll use this part of the equation for the impulse here. We won't bother with the integral of the force with respect to time. We'll just use I is equal to MV minus MU. So for part three, I'll do it in a different color again. 
So, and it's to particle B. So the impulse for B is equal to, uh, used M2 for B, V2 minus M2 U2. So these numbers are, well, we've got 2, V2 is equal to 5 minus 2 times and the final velocity of or the initial velocity of u2 so I'll just go back just to double check that and I've got it v2 is minus 5 is that right? yeah and let's see where are we with that v2 is plus 5 u2 is minus 5 so I'll just, I'll just write that in there so minus 5 so the impulse imparted will be 10 minus minus 10, which will be plus 10, which will be equal to 20. And this will be measured in kilograms, meters per second. And there we have it. That's our answer. Quite a long question, but very doable.